Luxury sports sedans are probably one of the most desirable market segments in the entire automotive kingdom, featuring some of the most legendary makes and models ever created. You have the stalwart German brands such as the Mercedes C-Class, the Audi A4, and the daddy of them all, the BMW 3 Series. Why does that sound cool when Chris Harris says it, but every time I say it, somebody contacts the authorities? You have the more upstart brands like the Lexus IS and the Cadillac ATS or CTS or CT4 or CT5 or whatever stupid crap they're calling them now. Seriously, can we please just bring back names? Can all cars just have names again? I, I get the Germans, they've, they've always had their thing, but like, can we bring back names, please? And of course, you have the Infiniti Q60. <laughs> I'm just kidding, nobody cares about the Infiniti Q60. And now, you have the Genesis G70, boldly plunging into this competitive market segment with a very impressive set of features. It's taking the fight to the Germans. It's showing Cadillac how it should be done. It's humiliating the Infiniti Q60. I, I mean, like, seriously humiliating the Infiniti Q60. Like, if they were at the club, the G70 would leave with the Infiniti's girlfriend, and then they would go home and... What's going on everyone, Jax here, and today I have an exciting car to review with you guys. This is the Genesis G70. Now the G70 has many positive attributes, but to be a player in this segment, like a real player in this segment, you have got to be able to dance. And the G70, oh, it can dance. It has a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 churning out 365 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque, backed up by a quick shifting eight speed automatic transmission, which makes this car seriously quick. How quick? Well, the ability to hit 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. If you can't comprehend what 4.5 seconds is, it's that much. The car can go from 0 to 60 that fast. It has an electronically controlled adaptive suspension, and it has drive modes that actually fully clarify the difference between comfort and sport. It has giant Brembo brakes to bring it back down to earth when you get going a little too quickly. And the steering is unbelievably fast and accurate by today's standards. Like it sort of almost actually has feel. Remember when cars used to have like feel in the steering? And you get all of that for just over $51,000. Yeah, I know that's a lot of money, but let's put it into context. If you were to option out a BMW 3 Series with the M340 Sport Package and all of the same electronics that the G70 comes with standard with its Sport Package, it would set you back $10,000 more than what the G70 costs. If you were to option out a Mercedes AMG C43 with all of the same options and packages, it would cost you $11,000 more than the G70. And if you were to option out an Audi S4 with all of the same electronics and sport tuned suspension and sport bits and pieces that go with the S4, it would cost you $12,000 more than the G70. In case you're wondering, that's $63,000 because that's 12,000 more than 51. 
I don't care how snooty you are. At a certain point, money is money, and you can buy a ton of toilet paper with $10,000. And if you're watching this video in like 20 years and you don't get that reference, just look up 2020 and pandemic and <laughs> you'll, you'll see what I mean. It's also worth noting that specking out an Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio to compete with the G70 will set you back $7 million in eventual dealer fees and repairs and heartache and then funeral costs as your family plans your funeral because you died of a heart attack or shock or the car just murdered you because it was part of the mafioso. I, I don't know, but it'll probably cost you more than 51 too. And if you want to spec out an Infiniti Q60, it'll probably cost you like a piece of a Bitcoin or a, a animal barter, like a goat trade or, and they might just give you one like unwanted Halloween candy. Like the Infinity Q60 is like the guy who gives out toothbrushes, you know what I mean? He's just trying to get rid of them. They might just hand you one, drop it in your bucket. But how does the G70 fare in this esteemed company? Is it going to be the next Infiniti G35, a car that seemed extremely promising 20 years ago, but whose goodwill and progress was entirely wasted over the following two decades? It's impossible to tell right now because the G70 is brand new, but let's look at the overall design to start with. From the side, the G70 hits all the right notes. And I like the nice aggressive wheels that sort of complement the classic design and proportions. They look really good, especially in this gray on gray spec. I will say that some have complained that some elements of the design are a bit derivative. I agree with that, but I also disagree with that because this is sort of one of the most classic luxury segments. So there's going to be a bit of copycat and there's going to be sort of an expected proportion and look to these type of cars. Some people actually point to the front, but I would actually point to the rear when it comes to being a little bit derivative. I think the rear end is a little dull. It's not quite as inspiring and as interesting as the front end. However, if you've been keeping up with Genesis and you've seen the G90 or the brand new stunning G80 that's about to come out, I have hope that the G70 will get sort of some of this trickle down design. And if those cars are anything to go by, the G70 could look truly unique in this market segment. Personally, I think the G70 in its current form looks better than Cadillac's new design language. And I actually also prefer it to the Mercedes C-Class as well, which I think is a little bit boring looking, to be honest with you. How it stacks up to the 3 Series or the Audi A4 really depends on your preferences. Those cars have been around for a long time and they're largely unchanged. In fact, every Audi basically looks like every other Audi. But that's not a bad thing because they're so good looking. If you're the kind of person like me who likes to blaze your own path, you might appreciate the G70's differences. But if you want to stay conservative and you like to float in the mainstream, you might rather have a 3 Series or an A4. I really like the lighting elements around the headlights and the grill trim and the fog light areas. In the sport models, they're finished in this sort of bronze look that I think looks really fantastic. It really sets the car apart and gives it sort of its own unique, distinct personality from the front end. They're very subtle, but it is a welcome and refreshing flourish in this design. But looks mean pretty much nothing if the car is a potato. And the G70 is not a potato. In fact, if the G70 were a food, it would probably be a freaking grenade. We're gonna call this stream of consciousness, Genesis G70. So where I live in Atlanta, things have gotten a little bit more serious about the uh, quarantine orders and they're really urging people not to go out at all. Now they're threatening fines and things like that for people that are doing non-essential things. I think I'm okay, I can claim that I'm working. Let's not push it. Bombing around in a awesome sports sedan is not working to most people. It is to me. I mean, this is hard work. I'm doing it for you. Most people would think of this as fun. So right now I've got the G70 set to comfort mode. In comfort mode, it's still very firm. It still retains that kind of sports sedan firmness that you would expect out of, you know, a sport package equipped BMW's 3 Series or Mercedes C-Class, Audi A4, those kind of things. What strikes me is that the ride is composed. Um, it's still pretty comfortable considering this car's riding on Pilot Sport 4's pretty aggressive summer 
more rubber. And the ride is still pretty composed, but also still sporty. It kind of has the ride you'd expect from the sort of uh, E46 series uh, of uh, three series, where the car somehow managed to be both sporty and supple in that sort of BMW witchcraft. Genesis seems to have nailed the ride handling balance in comfort mode. I'm gonna go down my handling road in comfort mode. I went down it in sport mode the other day, and don't worry, I'm gonna do that again too. But since this is first and foremost supposed to be a luxury car, yes, I know we're enthusiasts and we like a good sports sedan and all that. It makes sense, of course. They're trying to capture that enthusiast market. This car is specced out with every sort of sport option available. And the ride is firm. I'm moving around, but it's not floaty. It's sort of hitting these bumps in the way that you would expect a sort of firmly sprung sports sedan to hit them. Now that fairly sharp turn right there, that didn't upset the car at all. I mean, the car is an incredible, incredible handling car. And it's kind of gliding over most of these bumps and road imperfections. It's not wallowing, it's not floating. There's no getting around the fact that it has sporting pretensions, but it's definitely handling them well. That is one of the worst bumps back there, that dip. And it was far less bothered by that dip than Something like the Nissan Versa. Obviously, that's not apples to apples. Nobody's cross shopping the Nissan Versa and the Genesis G70 Max spec to sport mode. But you see the difference that suspension tuning can make. The Versa hit that and was all over the place. Kind of like the Toyota Camry I had a while back. It, it was generally well behaved, but it was very floaty and you were always wallowing. Then when you get to the smooth portion of the road like this, the ride is impeccable. I mean, it is so good. You forget that you're riding on paper thin strips of rubber and it just tracks. The steering in this car is fantastic. The closest thing that I could compare it to, and I am not exaggerating at, at all, the closest thing that I would compare the steering to is the NSX. No lie, not kidding. The NSX steering, it was like that. It, it, it's fast, there's nothing on, no slop on center, no dead space on center. And this is in comfort mode. In comfort mode. The steering is quick and responsive. I barely move my hand on the wheel and the car just tracks perfectly. No mid-corner adjustments. And I'm, you know, going at a decent rate of speed totally legal, but the car just, this is an impressive car. This is such an impressive car. In fact, I wouldn't even say impressive. This car is amazing. This is an amazing car. It is capturing this sort of vibe that I don't think we've seen in a while, this composed athletic competence. You know, the kind of stuff that BMW used to do when BMW was more BMW. The other thing about comfort mode that I really like is that there is a noticeable difference in the way the car behaves, especially with the throttle calibration. It is very twitchy in sport mode, and I mean that in a good way. It is very responsive. You get on it, and the throttle and the transmission, they're just on it. They're ready to rock. They're ready to have some fun. But in comfort mode, the throttle and transmission are everyday livable. They're calm, they're composed, the shifts are smooth and almost unnoticeable. The throttle calibration is sort of muscular powerful sports sedan like it'll get up and go still if you put the hammer down and oh can this car move god the suspension is so good I feel like it even rolls more in comfort mode like there's more body roll but maybe it's just me maybe I'm maybe I'm just perceiving that now let's try the handling road again in sport mode immediately immediately the throttle is way more aggressive way more aggressive it's like let's play let me do a quick check around all right this car is powerful. Woo hoo hoo, yes! 360 something horsepower. Oh my God, this car is fast. We're coming around the turn. Oh man, this car can hang. Good Lord. The suspension is a lot more busy, but then it's going a lot faster. It is so good. Oh my God. This car is incredible. This car, is a revelation. Motor Trend named it car of the year, rightly so. All of you doubters, all of you haters, and yeah, the car is bouncing more, but the suspension is so much more stiff. It's so much more planted. Oh man, 
all of you haters that are like, oh, Genesis is just Hyundai and Kia. It's not really a competitor to BMW and Mercedes. Please, please. Oh, good, yes. Let's go. Oh my God. This car would leave my C5 Corvette in the dust. It's got like another 15 horsepower. It's got like another 25 pound feet of torque. It's riding on killer tires. These Pilot Sport 4s, we went around that corner at a rate of speed and they just shrugged it off. They didn't even make a chirp. I think the car still rolls. It does lean a little bit in the corner still. Oh my God, this car can rock. The steering is unbelievably fast unbelievably fast for a sports sedan. It is so quick. The throttle calibration is so twitchy, and I, I mean that in the best possible way. It's like a millimeter of travel, and it's like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get up and play, let's rock, let's go to the racetrack, let's run rings around the Germans. The Germans could not hang with this car, seriously. Could you believe if Genesis comes out with like a performance brand, like the equivalent of M or AMG? Oh my goodness. I feel like you would have to be in something like the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio to even begin to have something comparable to this car's frenetic kind of twitchiness. It just feels so raw, which is insane because it's so nice. It is so nice. It is so nice. I hope I have adequate time with you to like fully convey how nice this car is on the inside. I had some guy on Twitter comment on my picture of this car. I posted a picture of it and he was like, that just looks like a $20,000 car. And I'm like, bro, what kind of $20,000 cars are you hanging out with? I had a $20,000 car in the last review uh, and it didn't have quilted leather seats, power everything, literally power everything because the trunk is also powered. The trunk is push button power up and down. I, I mean, that's just silly. I didn't expect that. This car looks fantastic on the inside. It feels fantastic. These seats are quite good. They've got great bolstering. They really hold you in place. They give you a sense of confidence. The wheel feels good. I like that it's like thick, but it's not like a caricature. It's not like silly. It's not like those wheels that are like grabbing onto like a pipe or something. And you're like, I can't even like turn this thing. It feels good. It's got these bumps right here where you'd put your hands. You can put your hands here. I kind of like to put them right here, and the wheel feels really good. The leather feels expensive. Everything about this car screams luxury. It's exactly, exactly why Genesis is winning right now. And the fact that I can just one hand it like that at a decent rate of speed with minimal turn just shows you how sporty this car is. The leather feels so, oh my gosh. This is probably the first car that I've tested so far. You can go back through all my videos this is the first car that I've tested that I like desperately want to buy this car. I love the color combo. I can show it to you right now. Hopefully you're seeing it. It's like gray on gray on darker gray with the black interior with the red stitching on the trim. Looks the business. It has bronzed sort of metal trim on the grill and in the headlights. It looks sick. Like it looks absolutely sick. I cannot say enough good things about this car. If you're a doubter, Drive it, just drive it, just drive it. Put your money where your mouth is. Stop talking crap about the oh, Hyundai and Kia, whatever. Go drive a Telluride, drive this car. Drive one of the upmarket cars, the new GV80 SUV coming out. Drive it before you talk trash. Because I can promise you, instead of running your mouth on the interwebs, if you actually got behind the wheel of one of these things, it would blow your mind. And you're like, well, what about the reliability? What about the Germans' reliability? The Germans' reliability sucks. It sucks, okay? Let's be honest and let's call a spade a spade. German luxury reliability sucks. You want reliability, buy a Lexus, okay? Buy a Lexus if you wanna talk crap about reliability. You wanna talk about performance? Sorry, sorry about you. God, this car is good. And the interior certainly looks the part. With quilted leather, contrasting stitching, and all of the technology, features, and amenities that you would expect of a car at this price. 
in this class. The gauges are clear and simple, with sort of a modern center screen in between them. This is a bit behind the Germans as they've mostly moved on to sort of a full screen driver instrument display. Some of those are good, such as in the Audi A4 and the Mercedes C-Class, but then some of them, like BMWs, are, well, they're ugly and weird looking. But, you know, screens are becoming the norm, and while I do appreciate the clean and simple gauges, I think the next generation G70 definitely needs a screen in front of the driver. The overall design and layout looks good and puts the driver sort of in control. It's definitely a driver-centric cockpit. There's a little plastic down low, but it's vanished kind of to the far corners. It's inoffensive, it's mostly in places where you wouldn't notice it, and almost everything that your hand comes in contact with is high-quality materials. You have leather, you have fake leather, you have plastic masquerading as leather, you have Alcantara or Alcantara or however you're supposed to say it. I actually used to call it Alicantra, which like makes no sense at all because that's not even how it's spelled. But we'll say Alcantara in the headliner, which is sort of a suede type of material. And you have some real metal and plastic masquerading as metal as well, which is a nice touch here and there, and it looks good. Disappointingly, the infotainment system is a somewhat undisguised Hyundai system, which means it's great, it's functional, has lots of options, but it's kind of slow. As usual, just switch to Apple CarPlay. It also has a mega lexicon audio system, which apparently is just a fancy way to say Samsung. But it sounds good, and it gets extremely loud, and that means it's good, because I equate noise with quality, and more noise must be better. But unfortunately, here in the interior is the G70's biggest flaw. And it's not the materials, it's not the technology, it's certainly not anything to do with the driving experience. It's the space, or more accurately, the lack of space. While I can achieve a nearly perfect driving position, it renders the rear seat behind me completely and totally useless. Seriously, it's little more than a parcel shelf at this point. It is not fit for human people in any shape or form. Well, I mean, some shapes, but not any that you'd want to experience. Basically, a Porsche 911 has a more spacious back seat than the G70 if you're trying to sit behind me. Now, granted, I'm six foot six, but still, Shouldn't someone six foot six be able to drive this car and take someone somewhere? And there's another slight problem. In order to get the seat where I want it, and I do have it where I want it, this driving position is fantastic. I've got the seat and the wheel perfectly positioned and I fit great, except I end up sitting sort of behind the B pillar. This was something I mentioned a long time ago in the Mazda 3 review. It's sort of a packaging trick to allow a taller person to fit in a car that maybe doesn't have the most interior space. But the drawback is you are essentially sitting behind the B pillar, which is fine when you're in the car, but it's challenging when you want to get out of the car. Basically, what that means is I look like an idiot every time I get out of the car. Every time. So where does that leave the G70 in the luxury car establishment? Were the upstart or pretender to the crown? The good news is that the G70 more than lives up to the hype. It's definitely above average, possibly even at the top of the class or near the top of the class in one of the most competitive classes. It makes huge power with a bit of turbo lag. It has excellent steering and it has an incredibly well-sorted suspension with actual definable differences between comfort and sport. You think I'm like highlighting that, I'm not. Do you know how many cars it's like sport, comfort, sport plus? It's all the same, all the same. Duff, duff, duff dry, duff light. Maybe you get the reference. When you combine all of these attributes, with an incredibly reasonable price for the class, you get an amazing value. The Genesis G70 is a ton of car for the money. Is there evidence of cost cutting to reach that incredible price? A tiny bit. As I mentioned, there's a little bit of plastic in out of the way places, but I wouldn't say that the Germans are any better in that respect. There was a persistent sort of squeak or rattle in the headliner just above my head, but that is somewhat forgivable because this is a test car and these sort of press cars lead difficult lives. So I don't know if that was something that would have passed at the factory and it developed over time. This car only has 5,000 miles on it, but I can promise you they were probably hard 5,000 miles. 
From a reliability standpoint, Genesis is a newer brand, but that's not to say that it's expected to have reliability problems. It's part of the Hyundai Kia empire, and their reliability has been quite good over the past couple of years. So Genesis, there's no reason to expect that they wouldn't be any different. Also, let's not pretend that the German brands don't have their own reliability and maintenance issues, especially those with the highest tech or the ones that are pushing the tech envelope. You know, with things like gesture control, how stupid is gesture control? Do I want to be driving down the street waving my hand around the inside of the car like a moron? It's called just touch the dial or press a button or do the thingy, whatever, but I'm not waving my hand in the air, BMW, thank you. I mean, who asked for gesture control, honestly? It was like the entire world, BMW, gesture control. But if you want to stretch your luxury buying dollar as far as it can possibly go, then the G70 is for you. It's an absolute blast to drive. It's loaded to the gills with options and technology, and it generally makes you feel a lot richer than you actually are. And isn't that what we're all trying to do anyway? Isn't that why we buy luxury items in the first place? So instead of leasing that Stripper 3 Series and bragging to your friends that you drive a Beamer that you don't own, or buying a 2002 Mercedes S430 so you can be the biggest poser known to man. Seriously, the early 2000s S430s might be the biggest poser. Look at me, I have a rich, large sedan car ever made in the history of luxury cars. Nothing screams, I desperately wanted a Mercedes and I have zero self-esteem, like a 2002 S430. Instead of doing that and shaming yourself and looking so obviously desperate for luxury, how about in two years, you pick up a nice pampered G70 off lease for a very reasonable price. I'm sure depreciation will be tough on Genesis in the first couple generations because it is a new luxury brand, but wouldn't you like to have 95% of the German driving experience for maybe 50% of the price and look like you have a shred of class. Do you have the self-esteem for that? Or are you still looking for that killer lease on a gutted BMW 3 Series? If so, my next video will be about timeshares. I hope you'll DM me and we can talk about them. Guys, this car was an absolute blast to drive and to film. My only regret was that I didn't have more time with it. And this review comes during sort of the quarantine lockdown period. And the only place I can really get to is this park near my house. And I wish that I had time to really take this car up in the mountains and give it the proper review that it deserves. Maybe in the future, we can revisit this car like we revisited the Buick Enclave and give it a more of a fair shake. Needless to say, the Genesis G70 is an incredible car. It represents an amazing value and its performance performance capabilities are no joke. Are some of the Germans slightly quicker to 60 or slightly faster? Maybe so, but you're gonna have to spend 10 grand or more to get there, and to me, it's just not worth it. Perhaps the biggest endorsement that I can give in any car that I review as a, uh, as a dad, as a family guy, is that what would I do with my own money? And if it were me, I would think really hard about buying a Genesis G70, especially if it saved me $10,000. Now, to note, I can't afford cars like the Genesis G70, which is why bringing them to you in YouTube videos is so much fun, and I really enjoy it, and I appreciate you tuning in. So let me know if you like this video. Drop a comment. What do you think about the Genesis G70? Is it a true luxury disruptor, or do you think it's just another pretender in a long line of wannabe 3 Series? Personally, I think the G70 is the real deal, and I can't wait to see where Genesis goes from here. Actually, Genesis, I would love to check out that G80 whenever it comes out and is available. And I know Mrs. Jax really wants to get a crack at that GV80. If you guys haven't seen the GV80, holy lord, that SUV is incredible. The interior and stuff, I, I don't want to spoil it. We'll talk about that later. I hope you liked this review. If you did, give it a like. Follow me on social media. Remember, don't forget to follow along on Instagram. I post a ton of pictures and behind the scenes content, and I post short form reviews from this on Instagram and TikTok as well. So let me know what you think of the video. Comment down below, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Ring the bell for notifications, and I'll catch you in the next video. All right, have a good one. Stay safe, stay sanitized, and for the love of all that is holy and decent, stay home, but don't hoard the toilet paper. Again, people of 2040, look in your history books. This will all make sense. All right, I'll see you in the next video.
Same people at the park learning how to drive. Same giant parking lot. Literally the exact same car, exact same people. And they're right next to me. Like, you're just jerks. Just clueless jerks. Have a little, read the room. You know what I mean? Read the room. People blasting music and yelling. I mean, could you be any more socially clueless? You see me talking to a camera, you see a microphone on top, you see me with a clipboard, you see me with the phone. <sighs> people, man. This is why we're all stuck inside. Because people are inconsiderate and stupid. Jeez, that's a loud truck. Good lord, how many loud freaking trucks are gonna drive by in one day? And isn't that what we're all trying? What the hell?